the 80s and the 90s, you know, it was great inspiration for people like me who wanted to be a musician. Hello, I'm Roger Lynn, and this is the MPC-60 MIDI Production Center. I started making music when I was about 11, 12 years old. My cousin Heavy D at the time was trying to make a record. Is when I was, you know, starting to learn and being introduced to studio equipment. From two turntables and a mixer to like drum machines and stuff, and I always was curious about the man behind the music. Heavy D and the boy! Once Heavy D started getting on a roll with his career, I would be hanging out with Eddie F, and he would show me little things. I would go to people's houses, you know, like hang out with Large Pro or something like that. He would show me some techniques on the SP, being in the right place at the right time and opening your ears and be ambitious, that was me. My first experience with sampling probably was like using a double cassette tape deck, taking the favorite parts of certain records and just repeating them with the pause button. So I would use the pause button on it and just keep pausing the part I like and kind of making a track out of it. I graduated from that to playing around with little, you know, drum machines like the TR-808, TR-909, then you had the SP-12, and then the SP-1200, which changed my life. They Reminisce Over You was a song I did about a homeboy that lived on my block. He was one of Heavy's dancers. His name was Trouble T-Roy. It was a freak accident on stage, and he died, fell off the stage 20 feet and uh, which devastated the, the community and what came out of it was this song. I, I, of course I remember the samples, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you. If you know music and you, you're a digger, you're gonna know what I use. That's just me, I just, I don't snitch. That song means the world to us, you know what I'm saying? Now, especially, you know, losing Heavy D. Troy. It's a song about, you know, reminiscing about people that you won't get to see anymore. That was the song right there that was like, defines who I am. That was my first time dealing with the, the business of clearing samples. It's just a part of the culture. It's something that you have to, it's, it, I, you know, I, I never minded like, revigorating an artist that we're sampling from. You know, people wanting to get paid for using their music and that's 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 a given, you know what I'm saying? We just discovered a talent that we could take an old record and bring it back or change it around, flip it, give that same artist we're sampling from new life. Because one day something, somebody's gonna do it to our music, someone's gonna sample our stuff, so. I think Tracklip could change how people make music by letting the freedom of sampling take place, you know what I'm saying? And which is why they're here to make it easier for producers to not having to worry about clearing a sample. There was times where we always used to worry about that kind of thing. So thank God for Tracklip. Here's the biggest rap band in the world with their first ever British live TV performance. This is Public Enemy with Shut Him Down. Public Enemy remix to Shut Em Down remix was a was a beat I made in actually five minutes. I was in a rush to go to the studio. I was late. I remember having to go next door to the basement. I just came up with this beat before I got in my car to go to the studio to, to lay it down. up to my B. 
Bumblebee and I liked what I heard. I remember being very excited and very anxious, you know, just wishing and hoping that they would like my rendition of it. You know, once Shut Em Down was done, I was just kind of on a roll. I remember doing Jump Around, Das FX remix, and Run DMC in one session in three different rooms. I'm working on three different songs. That was some superhero shit I was on. Run DMC was my favorite group, so that meant a lot to me to work with them. Next thing you know, we in the lab doing Down With The King. I had to prove myself to Russell Simmons because I was the new young guy at the time. These guys were established and already knew the game and already knew you know, what it took to make a hit record. I was just learning, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, stuck with Jam Master J. He rode with me through the whole thing and just kept my spirits up and told me, um, you know, we're gonna work on this and this is gonna happen. Rest in peace, Jam Master J. Um, song meant a lot, man. Went through a lot. Large Professor, he's another producer out of Queens. He asked me to be a part of, you know, working on an album for Nas. He brought Nas up to my house and we um, was in the basement and I was going through certain beats on, on disc. You had, you know, my beats were on like these Radio Shack floppy discs. I had a bunch of those discs around just with beats on them. And we found that one. It was a jazz sample, you know what I'm saying? People know what it is. You know, if you're a DJ and you're a digger, you know what that is. When I made it, it wasn't specifically for anyone and, and, until I played it for Nas. He started bopping his head and getting a vibe and getting the idea right then and there. It was a perfect match, you know, with his lyrics, you know, that beat. I sit the dumb peak watching Gandhi till I'm charged and writing in my book of rhymes all the words past the margin. The whole and, you know, uh, asked me to be a featured artist on, on the record, so I actually got on the hook. And, and sung the chorus. Instrumentals, to me, it just gives me a drive to want to keep doing music. From the cassette, I graduated to the drum machines, you know, read manuals and learned how to use the drum machine and then stayed in my room for months until I learned how to work it. One thing about being in hip hop is, is the fun part is inspiring each other. My ear for sampling changed thanks to Jay Dilla. <laughs> he used to tell me a lot that I inspired him to make beats and, and now you know that he's made his name, he inspires me anytime I hear something he's done. You know, sometimes I, I, I can get stuck and can't think of something with all the records I got too. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's really, the thought has to come over you and you have to have that feeling. A Little Soul, that was my first Peach Tremendals, um release. It was basically me being expressive with, with, with music, doing my, what I do best is like mixing the elements together and making it sound like one. My job fun is to go out there and find various different samples for people to hear. There's so much out there, you know, that people don't know or never heard. Samples are everywhere. It's all about how you hear them. That's what makes 
the word originality so important? You know, working with Kanye in Hawaii at his house. I met Kid Cudi, I met Rick Ross, I met uh, John Legend. We ended up doing a bunch of things, you know, the, the drums for, for Runaway. I, I laid like eight, eight beats down and we just narrowed it down to like one. The samples in, in The Joy was an old Curtis Mayfield song that, that, that people loved in the 70s. And it was like so defining in my household growing up. I remembered it and said, you know what, I'm going to try something with this. Kanye one day and he, was, he murdered it and then put Jay-Z on it. My advice for producers starting out is to always have passion in your heart. When you love what you do passionately, you'll be successful no matter what. Whatever it is in this in this world that you're trying to do. With the help of, you know, you know, friends, my cousin Heavy D always telling me stay inspired and you know, you put your mind to it and, put, and you put your best foot forward. I felt I always did, did that. You know, I got my own label now. I got my own artists. Look out for my new album, Peace Instrumentals 4, coming out soon. Dope Boy Soul, my new artist, Amir, AKA 25th Hour Man, True Soul Records. That's all it said on there.